Hello guys, this is Motion Design School and in this tutorial we will show you how to use our new script called Super Morphings, which was developed by Michael Ugliv and Yaroslav Gononov. This tool allows you to create amazing morphing animations within several clicks. So let's get started and I'm gonna show you how it works. First, let's run the script from the window panel. Here it is. You can dock it wherever you want, but I will leave it like this. It has a pretty simple interface. The main button is here. It makes all the magic. I'm gonna go to the composition, which is called Simple Morphing. Select two layers in the order you want them to morph and click Morph it. Here is our animation. Select the first layer and in the Effects panel you will see a couple effects. Please, don't change anything in the SM transformer without real need. I'm gonna hide it. The main controller is SM controller. It has three sliders. Amplitude, frequency and decay. All of them are about the follow-through animation after the main movement. They all must be familiar to you. Amplitude is about the power of the fading animation. It's in percents. Frequency is about the count of the oscillations in a second. And the decay controls the time of animation fading. The animation has some trajectory, but you can easily change it. Press P on the keyboard with the first layer selected. This opens the position property of the layer. As you can see, here are already some keys and also an expression. You don't need to edit expression. Let's just focus on the keyframes. Select the second keyframe, it is anticipation before the main movement. Let's change it. Then let's select the third key and change the outcome and tangent. Also, we will change the incoming tangent on the last keyframe. Pay attention to the third keyframe, it must be row across time. Otherwise, the animation will look awful. You can also change the incoming tangent of the anticipation, just don't forget to match it to the first keyframe. Maybe you don't want to have an anticipation, just the main movement. In that case, you can select two layers and click Morph it with the Alt key pressed. As you can see, now there is only the main movement with the same options. Ok, let's see what trails are about. I will change the count of trails to 9. Select the animated layer and press Trails. Here is a generated trails layer. Seems pretty nice. Here on the layer there are all the main settings such as color, width, dashes and some settings for randomizing trails. You can manually change trajectory for all the trails. By the way, trails can be applied to any animated layer, not only to a morphed one. Good. Let's see what else the script can do. You can morph multiple objects into one. Here in the multiple morphing composition, you can see a lot of elements. I'll select some of them, and the last one will be the layer in which they all will be morphed. I'm gonna click Morph it. Awesome! Let's select all the layers and the last one. Click Morph it with the Alt key pressed. Cool! Now we can select all animated layers and press Trails. Here is the main control layer for all trails. But if you want to adjust some of them, you just need to disable expressions on the properties you want to customize independently and change them. Right, here is one special option. Let's imagine that you have a lot of objects which you want to morph in pairs. 
Let's go to the to text composition. Here we have the supermorphins text, which I have already divided in letters. I will select all pairs I want to morph with the shift key pressed. In that case, the count field below trails will change the offset in the time of the pairs. Then, by still holding Shift key, I will click the main button. That's it. You can also press the Alt key along with the Shift key to have a straightforward animation. I mean, just the main movement with no anticipation. OK, the last function is the slicer. Here in the slicer comp, I have two precomposed layers. Let's select one and hit slicer. It divides the layer on the number of slices determined in the field count below the slicer. You can divide any number of layers and all of them will be divided into the same number of slices. But make sure that you haven't divided layers with masks, as in that case you probably won't get the result you want. Let me show it to you. I have disabled a layer that has a mask on it. Let's enable it. If I apply a slicer to it, I will get an awful result. So, to make it right, let's press Ctrl-Shift-C on the keyboard to precompose the layer. I will move all attributes in the new composition. Inside this composition, I will specify the region of interest. Then I will go to the composition and crop comp to the region of interest. Good. Now we can use slicer properly. Then I can select and slice it in pairs and with a shift key press, click Morph it. OK, good. Well, in general, you can morph anything to wherever you want. A shape to an image or an image to a shape. Let me show it to you. Let's create a new composition and add two images to it. I have them in my project. Let's import them and add them to the composition. You can morph one image to another easily. Or you can do it in the other direction. Also, you can morph an image to a text or a text to an image. I'll add a text. Let it be Motion Design School. Let's morph our picture to this text. Select both of them and click Morph it. Cool! We can also take the text first and then the picture and morph the text to the picture. It's up to you. Well, that's all for now. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and now you know how easy it is to create some morphing animations with the help of our new script. Create your animations, share it in social media and tag us Motion Design School, tag aescripts.com and we are going to repost the best ones. Bye and see you soon!